Hi, it's the TNT program, and just a quick reminder that we're going to be doing our live program this week at 7 a.m. Thai time instead of 9 a.m. as we sometimes do on Saturday mornings. So Saturday morning, 7 a.m., make the appointment. If you've got any topics you'd like to suggest or any questions, I'll put a link up on our community page if you'd like to pre-ask or pre-suggest any topics. We'll see you then. Hi everyone and welcome to The Last TNT for the working week and it's the first day of September. So welcome to a brand new month. It will be interesting to see uh, when all the numbers come out as they do during the first couple of days of each month, how each of the uh, local media have done with their clicks and their performance because uh, it's been quite an interesting time and a bit of shuffling going on around Thai media. So uh, I'll report on that as those numbers come out. Before we do uh, anything locally, I just thought we'd check on uh, Big Typhoon that's uh, just about to make landfall in uh, in China. It's been crossing through the South China Sea, uh, skipped just across the top of the Philippines without causing much damage. It's called Saola. Saola, I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced. You can see Thailand there. And this is the storm just about to make landfall. And uh, it's not that far away from uh, Guangzhou and Shenzhen, just zooming in a bit further there, which of course is all part of the Pearl Delta, including Hong Kong. And noting that Cathay Pacific have uh, closed down their flights whilst this storm heads through the region. So if you are heading into that particular area, it uh, might affect flights in and out for you. So worth checking. And we can see they're quite furious and the typhoons registering uh, up to around about 120, 130 kilometers per hour. So uh, in other parts of the world, you'd be calling that a hurricane. So it's the uh, typhoon season in the northwest of the Pacific. So we will get more of these storms coming through the area. In fact, uh, just notice there that there's another one not too far away, but not quite as ferocious called uh, Haikuei. And it looks like it might be affecting Taiwan in the next two or three days. So just a bit of a quick storm watch there uh, here on TNT. And a big thanks to our sponsor, Five Star Marine. There's a link in the description to a special deal for TNT viewers, as well as that uh, that big charity day that's coming up at the start of October. I'm heading out there, so we might see you if you join in a charity day. Link in the description if you'd like to read more about that. Thanks to Five Star Marine. News that a pardon request for Taxon has reached the government, reported by the Bangkok Post, and the outgoing Deputy PM Wisanu Kriyanam in his capacity as the Acting Justice Minister, I think it's his last day on the job today, uh, says he's received an application for a royal pardon for Taksin Shinawat. Speaking to reporters at Government House yesterday, he declined to say whether the former Prime Minister or his family had written the application. He said only that the application was for a pardon for an individual, as opposed to being part of a number of royal pardons and sentence reductions normally granted to mark certain special days. Mr Wissanu declined to reveal if the application covered all cases in which Taxon was ordered to serve eight years in jail in total. And he said, we have received the request. The rest will be according to the procedure. Under the law, prisoners can submit a pardon application that is passed from the Justice Minister through the Prime Minister to the Privy Council before going to His Majesty the King. The process usually takes one to two months. Also reported in Al Jazeera, Thailand's XPM Taxon has submitted a request for a royal pardon. And a representative of the 74-year-old Taxon declined to comment yesterday when asked by Reuters for confirmation. His lawyer on Wednesday said Taxon was preparing the request on his own. And Wisanu confirmed to AFP that Taxon had applied for a pardon over his eight-year jail term he's serving for convictions for corruption and abuse of power. A request for royal pardons must be submitted through the Corrections Department to the Justice Minister, then considered by the PM, who then submits it to King Mahavashira Longkorn. Taxon's return last week coincided with political ally and fellow tycoon Sita Tawisin, 
winning a parliamentary vote to become Prime Minister the same day with pro-military parties backing his Per Thai party, founded by the Shinawat family. Somewhat of a perfect storm of events, uh, most of them not particularly random. Uh, speaking of the new Prime Minister, Thai PBS World reports that the PM promises immediate energy price cuts after a first cabinet meeting. So this is things like household gas, a diesel, a power that we use. Let's find out. Energy prices will be cut immediately following the first meeting of the new cabinet. And the next paragraph, he told the media, that's the PM, that the discussion covered numerous matters related to energy prices, such as the procedures for reducing electricity and oil prices, especially diesel and cooking gas. The government's plan is to use the oil fuel fund and contributions to the fund from oil refineries to subsidise the price cuts on diesel and other fuels, cooking gas and electricity. He says there are three possible ways to cut the retail price of diesel, a reduction of the excise tax of 5 baht per litre, a reduction in contribution to the oil fuel fund, and overhauling the structure of ex-refinery oil prices. So it's not just the people who drive diesel cars or diesel pickups, it's the diesel that fuels the trucks, the trucks that deliver the food and all the other delivery services, the postal services. By reducing the cost of diesel for those, it means that we can lower inflation across the board. Well, that's the theory. And there are four ways to cut the price of cooking gas for household use by injecting more money into the oil fuel fund allocation of funds from the national budget, contribution to the fund from oil refineries, and an increase in contribution to the oil fuel fund. And currently, that's subsidising every kilogram of cooking gas by nearly 4.4 baht. And there are five short and long-term ways to bring down the price of electricity. The government can provide a subsidy to the household. The second measure concerns the management of the natural gas supply from the Gulf for power generation. And the third is to extend the period for the repayment of debt. And according to the Oil Fuel Fund office, the fund is now in the red by about 55 billion baht as of August the 27th. This includes about 44 billion baht for cooking gas and about 10 billion baht for other fuel subsidies. So uh, the taxpayers, including myself, are paying for these subsidies at the end of the day, but at least the government is trying to do something to address some of the high fuel costs at the moment around Thailand. So the new Prime Minister certainly hit the ground running as we bid farewell to the old Prime Minister. Nation Thailand reports Prayut regretted his angry outbursts, was hurt by social media comments. The outgoing PM, General Prayut chan told Government House reporters yesterday that he always regretted losing his temper with them while he ran the affairs of state during the past nine years. Well, unfamiliar with the ways of politics when he first came to the job uh, some nine years ago, he often attacked the reporters for asking him quite simple questions or confronting him with uh, things that the Prime Minister didn't want to hear. He sort of grew into the job, though, over the years and uh, became a bit more pally with the press, understanding that they were just part of the process. Prout was giving a farewell interview to reporters while having lunch with them at prepared tables on the lawns within the compound. Prout sounded apologetic when he told reporters that he felt sorry every time he burst out in anger when giving interviews to them during the past nine years. He said, after the outburst, I used to feel sorry and think that I should not have said it. He said he was not angry when reporters published reports criticising him because he knew that he was co-working with the media. And he says now he will compensate for not having spent much time with my family when I had to work hard during the past nine years. And he said he had no plans to travel. He flashed the love sign with his fingers to the officials and media while walking up the stairs of the Taiku Far building where he paid his respects to the statue of Brahma. And the Prime Minister there saying goodbye to the media on his last day at Government House. Uh, it looks like his minder there is just checking if that rose has still got any petals left on it. 
So farewell, Prime Minister Prayut chan o will be interesting to see if he writes some sort of book or memoir in the future. And going to a story from nation Thailand now, and free visa policy expected to boost condominium sales, and the Prime Minister Sita Thawisin's policy to offer free visas to Chinese and Indian tourists will likely boost the sales of condominiums. And this is from the Real Estate Information Centre, And according to the REIC, ownership transfer of condominiums to foreigners for living and investment purposes has recovered to the pre-COVID-19 pandemic period. And let's check the stats. Some 7,338 units valued around 35 billion baht were transferred to foreigners in the first half of this year. And so the the number of units is up 65% and 57.8% for the value of the condos. And Chinese buyers snapped up the biggest number of condominiums, some 3,448 units. So, well, that's nearly half of the units that have been sold. And they were followed by Russians, 702 units, Americans, 293, French, 269, and the British, 260. So uh, far and away, China is leading the way when it comes to the purchase of uh, condominiums in Thailand. And then surprisingly, Myanmar nationals spent the most at an average of 7 million baht per condominium, while Indian buyers opted for the most spacious with an average of nearly 90 square metres. So in the comments section, maybe somebody could explain why the Burmese are buying the most expensive condos. To our next story today, and this is an update from thephuketexpress.com, more mysterious debris washes up on Pang Ah Beach, and a new mystery debris on Bang Neng Beach in the Koko Kau in Takuhapa district. The item's about one metre wide and two metres long. Not clear if the objects found here in Phuket are related, and relevant officials have not been able to firmly identify where or what the debris is as of press time. Looks like the mesh is sort of the foundation for a fibreglass coating, Uh, But beyond that, I can't really identify what it might be. So it is a mystery indeed. Uh, Again, in the comments section, you might like to have a stab at what these mystery objects are, or if they're related, washing up on the Phuket and the Panga beaches. Well, not only these mystery objects, something a bit more sinister washing up on the beaches. Bangkok Post reporting venomous blue dragon found on Phuket Beach. Tiny creatures deliver a sting similar to that of a jellyfish. It's quite a beautiful little creature and we'd certainly notice that if we ran into it on the beach. A blue dragon, a small but highly venomous type of sea slug, has been found on Karon Beach in Phuket, according to pictures posted on a Thailand Facebook page. And the creatures are usually found in the middle of the sea and rarely seen in coastal areas. And that's according to Ton Tamrong Nasawat, a lecturer with the Faculty of Fisheries at the Kasset Sat University. Ton's been a major contributor to marine science in the region for, uh, for many decades. And the blue dragon is a type of mollusk or sea slug known as the nudie branch. It feeds on other sea creatures, including the Portuguese man war and other venomous siphonophores, noting that the Portuguese man war which we call a blue bottle or a stinger in Australia, uh, isn't actually a jellyfish. It's one of these siphonophores. It stores stinging nematocytes from the siphonophores within its own tissues as defence against predators. The small, ornate creatures rarely grow larger than four centimetres, but one sting can lead to nausea, pain, vomiting, acute contact dermatitis, and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And those stung by a blue dragon will feel as if their skin's been pierced by a needle coated with poison. They're advised to apply vinegar to the wound, the same remedy used to treat jellyfish stings. So let's just have a look at that thing. Uh, mm, Just keep an eye out for that. Looks very pretty indeed. I think the sort of thing that kids would probably like to try and pick up. But no, if it's blue, just uh, leave it on the beach. I think that's about the best advice that I can give. Going to our next story now, and this from the dailymail.co.uk. Yes, I know. 
And the story says American student 22 is murdered in Thailand after telling his university classmates not to draw a swastika on his forehead while they were out drinking in a Bangkok bar. Don't know why the Daily Mail seems to want to write great big long paragraph as a headline. An American student was allegedly murdered by his friend in Bangkok when he told him not to draw a Nazi swastika on his own forehead. Sol Rosenthal, 22, had been drinking with his Thai pal Set at a restaurant in the Thai capital on Monday. Set's actions irked Sol, who confronted his friend in an alleyway where he tried to explain to him that the swastika was an offensive symbol associated with horrific crimes against humanity. But the conversation descended into an alcohol fueled argument. The soul's body was found shortly afterwards by a shocked passerby who contacted emergency services. And paramedics battled to revive the wounded young man, but he succumbed to his injuries. And police say at the scene the team discovered the body sprawled on the ground. He was wearing a black t shirt, blue jeans. He had two stab wounds on the left side of his chest. Officers say they detained a set of mixed Thai and Filipino nationality who was carrying a five-inch knife, believed to be the murder weapon, whilst in a heavily intoxicated state. And cops said both men were students at the Ram Kameng University and were staying at a student dormitory in Bangkok. Officers have initially charged set with intentional manslaughter and carrying a knife in public. And that story reported in the dailymail.co.uk. Up to Patia now and reported in the PatiaNews.com. Patia teenagers firing guns to assert dominance at Pool Villa arrested. A photo there of a smiling official saying, Boys, it looks like your fun is over. And two unassociated groups of teenagers hanging out in neighbouring Pool Villa units in Patia were arrested yesterday for firing guns in a show of dominance against one another. The arrest took place at 9.30 yesterday morning at an unnamed pool villa located in Jomtiam. Patia police received a report from local residents. The two groups of teenagers staying inside the villa were firing guns into the sky, causing alarm in the neighbourhood. When police arrived at the scene, they found bullet shells of unknown firearms in front of the villa units. Police entered the villa, apprehended 24 teenagers, 13 males, 11 females, and they found four firearms concealed in the bushes behind the villa walls. And the police also searched an adjacent villa unit where they found a separate group of eight teenagers. Inside one of their vehicles, a homemade pistol, along with two magazines and five bullets were discovered. And the firearm was concealed in a plastic bag, looks like a few of the pistols there, on display from the police and preliminary drug tests indicate the presence of illegal substances in the systems of 15 teenagers among both groups. After conducting interviews, the police took all suspects into custody for further interviews and legal proceedings. I just used to go skateboarding. Not sure what these teenagers get out of these activities, but it looks like the uh, police are on the job. Well, thank you very much for watching today. Hopefully you're a bit more up to date with things happening around Thailand. Please subscribe to the channel and reminder that we're going to be doing our live program tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Thai time, not 9 a.m. So look forward to seeing you at 7 a.m. tomorrow.